several trials which have shown GUSTO-1, early IBB placement showed a trend towards lower mortality even without revascularization. Shock trial, subgroup analysis showed improved survival. SMASH trial, uh, the beneficial effect of early revascularization with IABP. Updates on IABP in acute myocardial infarction. Well, European guidelines do not recommend routine IABP. US guidelines have downgraded uh, 2A the recommendation. So, conclusion, IABP has no effect on all-cause mortality at six-year long-term follow-up mortality in this paper. It's still high with two-thirds of patients with dying. IABP in the perioperative period, when you're coming off cardiopulmonary bypass, patient is requiring high anotropes, the index is low, his filling pressures are high, echo performance is not very good, SVR is high, patient is high anotropes, that's the time to put in the balloon. Don't wait for the organ failure to set in. Coming to revascularization, this was a shock trial. Um, early revascularization led to 13% absolute reduction in uh, increase in one year survival. Um, so NNT is one in eight. When to revascularize? Um, within preferably three hours of the onset of symptoms. Um, mortality increases after eight hours, whatever you do. Which is better, PCI or cabbage? If vessels are amenable to PCI, PCI with the uh, antiplatelet medications improves outcome. And the time for a uh, median time in the PCI was 47 minutes and cabbage was 2.7 hours. Although survival, long term survival are both similar. Multi vessel disease, early PCI should be to target vessel, um, that means the culprit vessel. And if severe TVD or left main, unless there is a contraindication, surgery is the preferred method to be done. Although when you required emergency surgery, the mortality was about 10%. Fibrinolytic therapy, when does one do it? Uh, common outcome in both GUSTO and GISI trial, thrombolytic therapy fails to improve outcome in patients with cardiogenic shock. Why? Because cardiogenic shock, the stroke volume is low, so the pressure under which the thrombolytic will reach the atheroma and the thrombus um, will not be sufficient to penetrate into it and therefore efficacy would be reduced. And some few studies have recommended uh, inotropic uh, uh, vasopressor therapy to increase the perfusion of the thrombolysis. In this, so case two, we had this 33 year old female after delivery from another nursing home. She developed sudden dyspnea, hypotension, which did not respond to vasopressors or uh, IV fluids. She was transferred to the ER. She had preeclampsia during her pregnancy. So we secured the airway, put invasive monitoring lines and floated a pulmonary artery catheter to optimize her inotropic therapy. Um, she had an urgent uh, transthoracic echo which revealed severe LV dysfunction with the EF of 35%. Despite opti optimizing vasopressin and inotrope, she remained in a low output strength. So the stroke volume was low. What should be the next treatment strategy? Well, considering high risk factors and mode of presentation, she was diagnosed with a peripartum cardiomyopathy. So, multidisciplinary team was involved to put her on a VA ECMO. So, she was put on VA ECMO over four days. Gradually, her cardiac performance improved, uh, assessed by ECHO and other parameters. Review ECHO showed a 45% EF, 